Okay, guys, so we will start the tissues. Uh, this is week two, and we have all about tissues in week twos. And we will cover four basic types of tissues today. Two types today and two types on Wednesday. So all tissue uh, lecture we cannot cover in a day, okay? So what are the four basic types of tissues before I start? The epithelial. Good. Connective. Connective. Muscle and nervous. Nervous. And nervous, good. Today we're gonna talk about epithelial tissue and uh, maybe some part of connective tissue. And the next time we're gonna talk uh, connective card, uh, the muscle and the nervous. Muscle and nervous, we have less amount, but tissue and uh, the, the epithelial and connective has a lot of part because the muscle tissue and the nervous tissue will also be uh, covered in detail in the muscular system and the nervous system, okay? So as you know, tissues are the group of cells which work together, group of cells which work together. And the studies of the tissues are called histology. You see in my uh, note here, histology is the study of tissues. And when you study the abnormal tissue, when you have a disease or any damage or trauma, then the structure of tissue is damaged. And that study is called histopathology. So histopathology is study of pathological conditions of the tissues, okay? For example, let's see, when you take a pap smear, Papi smear is cervical epithelium swab. And then you see under microscope and you see for a normal squamous cells. But sometimes, so that, that is histology. But sometimes we see cuboidal abnormal large cuboidal cells, highly cytoplasmic contents, more dense nucleus. And that is warning starting point for cervical cancer, and that is histopathology of the cervix. Are you following me? So that is the difference between the histology and histopathology, okay? So again, tissue are the group of cells which work together in functionally related groups. And another definition for tissue is a group of closely associated cells that perform a related function and are similar in structure. So let me give you a basic idea of the tissue. So what are the things you need for a tissue? What is the major primary thing for the tissue? You need what? Cells, okay? So here is cells. Here is another cells. Here is another cells. Here is another cells. So no matter which kind of tissue are they, there is always the cells. And then there is, so if there is cell, then there is a space inside the cell. Here, space inside the cell. What is this space called? Intracellular mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. This space is called intracellular space, I-N-T-R-A-C-E-L-L-U, cellular, cellular space. And then some of the space is outside the cell. You see here, here. So what is this space? Extracellular space. Extracellular space. And then there is another space which is outside the cell, but they are in between or among the cells. And that space is called interstitial space. I-N-T-E-R-S-T-I-T-I-A-L, interstitial space. Clear? So that is, <clears throat> sorry. That is the space related with the cells in the tissue. Now, 
So these cells are separated from each other. What holds the cells then? These cells make some matrix. Matrix means protein, carbohydrate, some glycoproteins, some liquid, some other fibers. And those fluid is called extracellular fluid or extracellular matrix. So extracellular matrix hold these cells together extracellular matrix. And based on what kind of cells they have and what is the amount of extracellular space, we divide tissue into four basic types. They are, again, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue, okay? So let's go to next slide now. So the four basic types of tissues and their basic functions. Epi means outside, outside. So any body covering is covered by epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue covers your body, your outer body or inner, your inner body. So outer body is your skin. Skin is epithelial tissue. What is your inner body? Inner body is inside your body cavity, like inner wall of your mouth, inner wall of your esophagus, trachea, pharynx, larynx, inner wall of your GI tract, inner wall of your uterus, bladder, vagina, any tubular organs. Inner wall is also covered by epithelial tissue. So epithelial tissue covers inner and outer wall of the body and body cavity, clear? Then there is another tissue that is called connective tissue. Connective tissue supports other tissue. It supports epithelial tissue, it supports muscle tissue, support other connective tissue. And connective tissue basically connects. For example, your muscle is connected to your bone by connective tissue. Your epithelial tissue have no, not their own blood supply. Epithelial tissue is lying over the connective tissue and that's why connective tissue support epithelial tissue. Connective tissue also covers your muscles. That's why connective tissue supports muscle tissue. So you name it any organ anywhere in the body, you will find connective tissue. That's why connective tissue is the most abundant tissue in the body. It supports, protects, and helps other tissue. Fat in your body, you can find anywhere fat in the body. It is around your organ, it is around your skin, everywhere, and that is also connective tissue. Fat is a kind of connective tissue. Next tissue is muscle. Muscle means movement. So muscle tissue moves your body, moves the content in your body, moves the blood in your body. That's why there are three types of muscles. And those three types of muscles in the body are skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Skeletal muscles are, can you see in the note section? Skeletal muscles are found in the, attached to your bones. And it helps move your body. That's why we call them skeletal muscle because it is attached to the skeleton. It moves your body, it flex your joints. This is, you can stand, you can sit, you can talk, you can walk, you can tiptoe, whatever you do. That is the function of skeletal muscle. They are also called voluntary muscles because you can contract them at your will. Clear? Mm -hmm. Next types of muscle tissue is smooth muscle tissue. Smooth is also called involuntary and it is called smooth because it has no stripes. It has no striation. We will go that in detail later. That's why it is called a smooth. And a smooth muscles are found in the wall of tubular organs. What are the tube-like organs in our body? Like your trachea, esophagus, ureter, GI tract, small intestine, gut wall, all are smooth muscles. What does a smooth muscle do? A smooth muscle 
contract and squeeze and propel, move the content of the tube. When GI tract contract, it takes food down. When urinary tract contracts, ureter, it takes urine down. When uterus contract, propels baby during the childbirth. When fallopian tube or uterine tube contracts, it moves egg from the uterine tube into uterus. Those are the examples. Are you following me? That is the movement too. So that smooth muscle is also helping in movement. The third type of muscle tissue, uh, muscle tissue is cardiac muscle. Cardiac is the Greek term for your heart. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. Sure. And when heart muscle contract, it pumps blood from the heart into the blood vessel wall. And then in the blood vessel wall, because it is a tubular organ, smooth muscle in the blood vessel, blood vessel wall contract and pumps blood from the blood vessel to all over the body. So that is the muscle tissue. The third, fourth type of tissue is nervous tissue. Nervous tissue are found in the brain and the spinal cord and their cells are neurons and nervous tissue control all other tissue in the body because nervous tissue can excite, generate and conduct electrical impulse, okay? Nervous tissue have two types of cells, the neurons and the supporting cells, okay? So this is basic idea of these four types of tissues. Uh, let me. Okay, so let's just start with, yes. Um, so can we also call the cardiac um, muscle like also involuntary? Because yes, it cardiac muscle is also involuntary, yes. Okay. We'll, we'll come there, okay? Uh, I was just giving a brief there. So epithelial tissue covers the body surface or lines the body cavity. Can you give me example one lining of the body cavity? Anybody? Your skin. Skin is outside body surface, body That'd cavity. Be like, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, would that be like your mesentery? No. Yeah, your mesentery. Like mm -hmm. peritoneal lining of your GI tract or inner wall of your urinary bladder, okay? Forms parts of the most glands. In your body, we have two kinds of gland, exocrine gland and endocrine gland. Exocrine glands are the glands with the ducts and endocrine glands are the glands without duct. And these all glands, it doesn't matter whether they are endocrine or exocrine, they all develops from epithelial tissue. Glands do not develop from other tissues. Sometimes neuroendocrine glands may develop from neurons. Otherwise, all glands develop from epithelial tissue. So function of the epithelial tissue, epithelial tissues also called epithelium. Like your skin is epithelium your inner lining of your gut is epithelium. So what are the function? They protect like your skin, they absorb. Like when you eat food, what happens? Your GI tract absorbs sugar, fat, protein. They secrete, when you drink less, your GI tract secrete, your kidneys secrete. They do ion transport like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium can cross through that membrane and go from one cell to another. They filter and this epithelium, epithelial tissue has some goblet cells in some tissue. They produce mucus. That's why they make the surface slippery, okay? Special characteristics of epithelia. So what are the special characteristics which differ, differentiate epithelial tissue from muscle connective and nervous tissue. So there are, there are cellularity, 
spatialized junction and polarity. Uh, so, as you <clears throat> remember at the beginning, I said any, all the tissues in the body are made up of cells and extracellular matrix, which is produced by the same cells, okay? So what is the arrangement cells or cellularity? Epithelia are composed of almost entirely of cells. That means cells are packed in the epithelial tissue. There is very minimum extracellular space and minimum extracellular material. Cells are separated by minimal extracellular material because there is minimal extracellular space. <clears throat> Sorry, are you guys following me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, between the cells, there is like if they, let's see, this is my two hands are two cells. So if this is a cell and this is the outer surface of the cells and this is the inner surface of the cells. So outer which is exposed to the space is apical surface of the cells and which is attached to the connective tissue is called basal <clears throat> surface of the cells, okay? But this is the lateral which where they attach to each other. This surface is called basolateral surface or lateral surface. And when two cells in the uh, ep tissue, epithelial tissue come in contact with each other, they have a special junction between them. We are gonna talk about that later. Okay, polarity, cell regions of the apical surface differ from basal surface. So apical surface is outside, basal surface is inside. Okay, let's see in the diagram where you can understand better. Other characteristic, epithelial tissue has no blood supply, but every cell needs nutrition. So that's why they are supported by connective tissue because they are avascular, but they are innervated. Avascular means no blood vessel, absence of blood vessel, but they have nerve <laughs> supply. That's why when you pinch your mouth, mucosa, you, it is painful because you are pinching the nerve, but there is no blood supply. So blood supply comes from underlying epithelia, uh, underlying connective tissue, okay? Uh, epithelial tissue regenerates very fast. Like you have experience when sometimes you are eating in a, uh, you are taking your dinner and all of a sudden you bite your chick and what happens, you, you gum, what happens? Next day you will, you will see there is no wound, it is already repaired. So around 72 hours, dead cells is immediately replaced by other cells. That's why they are very, good capacity of regeneration. Lost cells are quickly replaced by cell division. So let's see here. This is the epithelial tissue. You can see here. Uh, as I told you earlier, this is the epithelium. Epithelium lies over the connective tissue. So this is connective tissue. Connective tissue has connective tissue cells here, which is not uh, explained here. And then you have some matrix, which is called basal lamina and some connective tissue uh, fibers, reticular fibers. These reticular fibers connects these basal lamina to the reticular, uh, the, the, the connective tissue. And together we call basal lamina and reticular fibers the basal lamina. So basal lamina is attached to the connective tissue which hold epithelial tissue together. You can see, if you see in the epithelium, there is no blood vessel, but in the connective tissue, you have blood vessel here. Nerve is reaching up to the epithelial. This is the apical surface of the epithelium and this is the basal surface. Here is one cell complete two, three, and this is partial cell and here is another partial cell. The Epical surface of the epithelium sometimes, as you know, cells plasma membrane can infold it, yes? Last time we talked, the infolding can be cilia or microvilli. Microvilli are smaller in length 
cilia are bigger in length. Microvilli are like brass border. And they increase the surface area of the cell and they are important for absorption, secretion, filtration, whereas cilia has a lot of microtubules in the core and they bits in unison, unison to sweep and clean your throat. Are you following me? This is the lateral surface, basolateral surface. You see the junction between these two cells, there is several junction here like button, here is like clicker, here is the button and the clicker, and then there is gap holes. So these junctions are, cell junctions are, the button-like is tight junction, then there is clickers-like, which is, you have a thread like you are stitching the plasma membrane of two cells, that is adherent junction, then there is some thick protein fibers, uh, protein molecule, and then fibers, uh, clickering them, that is desmosomes. And then there is a holes like a structure that is called gap junctions, okay? These tight junctions does not allow anything to move from this cell to this cell, okay? Uh, this adherent junction hold them together. Desmosomes also help them hold them together. Gap junction allow ions and other mo molecules to move from this cell to this cell. These are the function of epithelial tissue. In the exam, if I ask which one of the following is not the function of epithelia or epithelium or epithelial tissue, then you have to know. So epithelial tissue and epithelium are singular and epithelia are plural. Okay, classification of epithelium. Epithelium classification are based on two things. How many layers of cells are there and what type of cells are there? If there is only one layer of cells, then we call them simple. If there are more than one layer, then we call them stratified. If the cells are flat, then we call them squamous. If cells are wide, as it is tall, then we call them cuboidal. If the cells are taller than the wider, then we call them columnar. So let's see here, this is flat. So this is here, there's flat cells lying over the connective tissue. So this is squamous. This is cube-like, so we call cuboidal. And this is column-like, so we call them columnar. Okay. Now, simple squamous. Simple squamous means, means how many layers will be there? One. One. Just one. And the cell type will be flattened cells. Squamous means flattened. So description, this is a single layer flat cells with disc-shaped nuclei, and they have a specialized type. You know the epithelium lies inside of the body or outside of the body. So let me give you one example, three examples. Outermost body surface is your skin. That is epithelium, okay? Then you go inside. When you go in GI tract wall, what is that? That is also epithelium, but what, what we call them? We call them endothelium. If you go inside your, uh, aorta, big artery, and see the inner lining. What is that? Also, endothelium. You go inside your heart and see inner lining of the heart. What is that? That is also endothelium. But between the outside skin and the inside, there is in the middle wall, and there is another covering, membrane, like your pleura, which covers your GI tract pericardium, which covers your heart, pleura, which covers your lungs, and they are also epithelium, but we call them mesothelium, which is called middle covering. So outer covering is, outer covering is? Epithelium. Outer covering is 
epithelium. Epithelium. If the same cover is in the middle membrane, then we call them mesothelium. And if they are inside, then we call them endothelium. So mesothelium like lines peritoneal, which is the GI tract covering and pelvic covering. Pleura covers your lungs, pericardial cavities lined by pericardium, which is mesothelium. And these all covers visceral organs of the cavities. Professor, so these are just subcategories of the epithelium. Yep. Okay. They are all subcategories. So here you go. I'm going to go fast a little bit here about all the epithelium. And this you're going to see in the practice lab too. So here, this is simple squamous epithelium. Before I go over anything, I want you to give the background. So when you try to see, because in the next lab exam, you will have this kind of microscopic slide and you will be asked, what kind of tissue is this? Where do you find this kind of tissue? What is the function? What is the feature of this tissue? Okay, so here, this is simple squamous epithelium. When you see under micrograph, um, microscope, which is photo micrograph of simple squamous epithelium forming part of alveolar sacs, air sacs, walls with 400 magnification. So you see here, this is, your alveoli, air sacs. And the wall of the air sacs, you see there is very flat cells. This is simple squamous. You can see very dark, some of the dark structure here. Those are the nuclei of, you see here, nuclei of squamous epithelium cells and air sacs of lung. So this is found in the wall of your alveoli that is called simple squamous epithelium. My question will be, is it epithelium, endothelium, or mesothelium? Epithelium has three types. Epithelium, endothelium, and mesothelium. Endothelium. This is endothelium, yes, because it is inside your body cavity, good. Okay, so this is a function allows passage of material by diffusion and filtration in sites where protection is not important and secretes lubricating, uh, lubricating substance in cirrhosis. Where are they found? They are found in the kidney tubules, in the lungs, air sacs of lungs, lining of heart, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, lining of ventral body cavity like cirrhosis. So this is found all over the body. I have a question. Inside, is that a cross section? Is it yes. a cross section? Okay. It's a cross section, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so oh, another. Um, hey guys, uh, let me, because this is lecture, and if I start discussing a lot, then we will not finish on time. So if you have like very needed question, then you keep it, or you can write down the question, and then once we stop the recording, then we have unlimited time. We can. Uh, ask the question. Otherwise, what happens? Because we post these lectures. The same lecture, we record it, recorded lecture, we post, and we will not finish. We have only 50 minutes and we cannot finish. So if you have like very important question, then keep it. Otherwise, write down and you can ask me later. Okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry. For, so for on the lab, will you uh, tell us where um, the cross section is taken? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a simple cuboidal epithelium. Simple means one layer you see here, and there is cube like cells. And again, here is transfer section of the kidney tubules. So you see, this is the space of the kidney tubules, and there are cells around it. See the dark nuclei? And then these are the extracellular space the maroon color extracellular space. Other structure, it may be blood vessels and other stuff. So you see the cuboidal cells and this is the apical surface of the cell and this is the basal surface of the cells. So we have simple cuboidal epithelial cells and then basement membrane here. And these are the connective tissue. Some of them are blood vessels, which is holding them. Okay. 
where you find, you find in the kidney tubules, one location and some other location. Uh, simple columnar epithelium. You see there is basement membrane here and connective tissue and you see the column like cells, but only one layer. And where you find, you find in the GI tract wall. So you see, this is the apical surface of the cell. This is another apical surface of the cell and it is connective tissue and basal surface, basal surface and basement membrane, basement membrane here. And you see nuclei of the cell and column cells. Okay, so these cells are column-like, there is only one, and that's why this is simple columnar epithelial. And you can see here, this is from the stomach mucosa. Okay, if you see this same thing from the small intestine, then you see a lot of villi here, microvilli. Here you go. This is pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Pseudo means false stratified. So this is the epithelium here. You can see there is only one layer of cells. They are column like cells, but the height of the cells are different. Some cells are long, complete, long from apical to the base. Some cells are very small in length, but they all are column. And due to different height of the cells, their nuclei are in different level. You see two nuclei are here, another is here, another is here, another is here. So when you see such kind of epithelium, even though they are single layer, they look like multiple layers of cells. And that's why they falsely look multiple layer, falsely look like stratified. And that's why we call them pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. So here, this is from the trachea. Here is the connective tissue, the basement membrane, and you have pseudo stratified epithelial layer. You see the cells, some of them have nuclei here, some of them have nuclei here. Some of them have nuclei here. And then most important to recognize pseudo stratified, their apical layer of the plasma membrane is infolded and have a lot of cilia, okay? Some of the cell you see whitish, like here and here and here, they are goblet cells. These goblet cells produce mucus and that mucus on the cilia clean the dirt and debris which you inhale. That's why our trachea contains this kind of uh, membrane. Another name for this membrane is respiratory membrane. This is also called respiratory membrane. Membrane. Okay, now a stratified epithelium, as you said, a stratified epithelium contains two or more, la more layers of cells. Uh, they regenerate, g regenerate from basal layer. So if there is a stratified layer, that means there are, let's say this is my half fingers and they are the cells, first layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer. So this is basal layer. This is apical layer of the cell. When these cells die apical layer, these cells divide and slowly replace the dead cells, okay? Major role of stratified epithelium is protection. Like in your skin, you have rubbing, friction all the time. And that's why your skin epithelium is stratified squamous. Uh, major role in protection. And so let's see if there is multiple layer, then we call them stratified. But what is the second name? Like a stratified columnar. If there are multiple layer and the outer layer is columnar, then we call them a stratified columnar. If there is multiple layer and outermost layer is cuboidal, then we call it stratified, stratified cuboidal, okay? So named according to shape of the cells at apical layer, clear? Okay, stratified squamous epithelium. 
as you said, it is a stratified squamous epithelium. That means there is multiple layer and the outermost layer is flat types. So many layers of the cell is squamous in shape, deeper layer cells appear cuboidal or columnar, thickest epithelium tissue, and they are adapted for protection from abrasion, laceration, tearing, cut from all thing, okay? So here you go, a stratified squamous epithelium. This is from your skin, you can see. This is the basement membrane here, and here is connective tissue particularly the areolar connective tissue, and then multiple layers of cells. You see here? Sorry, this is not from your skin. So this is from your esophagus. So you can see here the flat cells, and at the end you can see, you cannot even see the nuclei. You see the cells are so packed, there is very minimum extracellular matrix, and then cells are like flat, dead cells on the surface. And this is found in your esophagus, uh, urethra, uh, vagina, all layers of those opening, okay? Anal opening in your mouth, okay? Uh, but if you see, later you're gonna see the similar tissue will be in your skin, but on the surface there will be keratin the protein produced by these basal cells. And that's why skin is tough and waterproof. But esophagus has no keratin and it is not tough and waterproof like skin. If you start seeing keratin in your esophagus or mouth, that is the telltale sign of squamous cell carcinoma, cancer. No, that's not normal. So tobacco, tobacco chewing develop this tissue into stratified squamous, keratinized. So let's see, we don't have hairy skin, but I can, let me, if I have hairy, hairy skin, I don't. I will show you later in the connective tissue. Okay, so connective tissue, stratified connective, sorry, stratified squamous epithelium, Keratinized will be from the skin, but there will be glassy layer of keratin. This is another stratified cuboidal. That means more than one layer. And there is cells are cuboidal. So this is from your salivary glands, stratified cuboidal epithelium forming a salivary gland duct. So this is the duct of your salivary gland. You can see more than two layers or one layer of cells here cuboidal epithelial cells. This is the apical surface and here is basal surface outside because this is the duct and this is the lumen of the duct, cuboidal cells. You can see the nuclei and then extracellular matrix. They are found in the ducts of the salivary glands. Uh, then is a stratified columnar epithelium. This epithelium is very, very rare. It is found only in the urethra. Okay, in the, <clears throat> the uh, particularly in the upper part of the urethra, in the lower part of the urethra, there is a stratified, okay, a squamous. So here you have the apical surface here again. This is the basement membrane. Always when you see, try to understand and try to identify a tissue, always pay attention to the, the basement membrane. And you can see there is more than one layer of cells and they are cuboidal. Here is transitional epithelium, which is slightly different from, what, the, what is the meaning of word transition? Transition means changing. Mm -hmm. So there are certain location in the body where there is changing shape of the tissue, like your urinary bladder. When there is urine in the bladder, bladder is collapsed. When there is no urine in the bladder, bladder is expanded. And that's why you can see here connective tissue in the urinary bladder, basement membrane, connective tissue, and then several layers of cells. Some cells are columnar here, some are like flat. And on top, you can see some cells are like round, cuboidal, some flat. And they change the shape of the cells based on 
whether it is stretched or relaxed. And that kind of tissue is called transitional epithelium because they transition from shape of the cells from one side to another based on stretch. And that is found only in three locations. Write it down. Those three locations are inner lining of urinary bladder, lower lining of you lower part of lining of ureter here and lining of upper part of urethra. So lines the ureter, bladder, and part of the urethra. You can see here too. Okay, so glands. Why we talk about glands in the uh, epithelial tissue? Because as I said earlier, all the tissues develop, uh, all the glands develop from epithelial tissues. So the exocrine glands and endocrine glands, when epithelial tissue forms the duct and secrete something, then they are exocrine gland. And when epithelial tissue are buried inside the connective tissue, and then whatever it products sent to the blood vessel, then that is called endocrine gland because they are duct less glands, okay? So exocrine glands have ducts carry products of exocrine gland to the epithelial surface. What are the example? Examples of exocrine glands are like salivary glands, saliva, saliva glands, your sweat glands. Those are the exocrine glands, like your mucus glands. Uh, these in, uh, include uh, the mucus secreting gland, sweat and oil gland, salivary gland, liver and pancreas. These all are the exocrine gland because they make their product and secrete into the duct and then comes to the surface. Whereas endocrine glands secrete into blood vessel, blood vessel carry it to the target organ. Exocrine gland can be one celled or made up, make up, made up of several cells. If they are made up of one cell, then we call them unicellular exocrine gland. For example, goblet cells. Goblet cells produce mucus. Mucus is made up of mucin and water. So what does, how you think mucus is produced? Mucus is a cell, they have DNA, they have code. So they come to the messenger RNA, come to the RNA, comes to the rough endoplasmic reticulum in ribosome and they synthesize mucus, mucin, and then adds water, becomes mucus, and then secrete mucus. What does mucus do? Protects and lubricate many internal body surfaces and goblet cells are an unicellular exocrine gland, as I said earlier. Multicellular exocrine glands, there are several glands in the body which are multicellular glands. So what do you mean by multicellular? They are made up of more cells. And then in multicellular, they have duct and they have secretory unit. So they have two basic part, epithelium wall duct and secretory unit, here you go. So this is one cell duct, a uh, one cell gland. This is the goblet cell. So this is unicellular gland. You see here, this is nuclei, Golgi apparatus. They are making mucus and the mucus comes outside. Here, multicellular exocrine glands uh, classified based on how many ducts they have, uh, structure of the duct and what kind of secretory units they have, okay? So they can be simple compound, tubular, alveolar, and tubular alveolars. Let me explain it in the diagram. So if there is only one duct, it has not branched, then we call them simple. Duct does not branch, like simple, and secretory unit is like tubule, so we call them Simple tubular. This is only one duct, but it is branch. So we call them simple branch. It is only one tube, but it has alveolar structure, round. So we call them simple alveolar. It has only one duct, but the alveolar is branch. So simple branch alveolar. 
here compound structures. So compound glands are have several ducts. This is main duct and then three more ducts. You see here. So this is called compound duct structure. Ducts are branches, like compound and secretory units are like tubes. So you see, compound tubular, compound alveoli, compound alveolar, compound tubular and alveoli. So we call it compound tubulo alveolar. Are you following me? This is so all the exocrine glands are classified based on the structure of the duct and structure of the secretory units of the glands. Endocrine glands, on the other hand, are ductless glands. They secrete substance directly into blood, blood stream and their secretion is called hormones. And endocrine secretion do not work essentially nearby. It goes all the way and distance tissue where there is target cell, they act. Some example of endocrine glands are pituitary glands, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, hypothalamus, pancreas, ovary, testes. These are the example of endocrine glands, okay? So this is all in the first lecture of tissue. Uh, 